Brent Weeks makes his long-anticipated return to mid Cryu and the Night Angel universe with Night Angel Nemesis, due to come out in just a few days. I was able to get an advanced copy. Here's my review. This is Phantology. You may have heard of us. So first thing you need to know is that this is a long book. I mean, in epic fantasy, you kind of expect long books, but this one's over 800 pages, over 315K words. And a big part of my review is that I don't think it needed to be quite this long for the story it was trying to tell. More on that later. Overall, I have kind of conflicted feelings on this book. It's honestly a little bit hard to review because there are some very good things that it does. And I think it's, it's, it's a big step above the previous Night Angel books. However, there's also some legitimate criticisms that I had going through. And so I'm really kind of struggling to rate it because I feel like it's a book that has a lot of potential. Some of it is unrealized. But on the other hand, it does some things really well, and I can't really take away from those positives too much. So I'm a little conflicted on where to actually finally rate it. We'll see where we land. So starting with the positives, which there are a lot of, first of all, I'm going to say Brent Weeks' prose from a technical standpoint is very good. He does a great job with the simile and metaphor and, prosa and prosaic language, and just has some kind of beautiful turns of phrases at times, but it also doesn't make it too hard to get into. It's just fun to read in that standpoint. And you can tell he's gotten a lot better since his previous Night Angel books. The Those Night Angel books were the last Brent Weeks that I read. And in between then, he obviously wrote all five Lightbringer books. And you can tell there's been a lot of writing that he's done in between the two series, you know, since he was last in Night Angel and now Night Angel Nemesis, because this is a significant level up from Beyond the Shadows where we last left off with the Night Angel books. Speaking of those books, a big positive is for fans of the series, you're going to get all of the same beats that you expect from a Night Angel book. There is a lot of action, Kylo is prominently featured, there's a lot of cool magic and cool characters and you know the Night Angel aspect of everything with kind of the moral ambiguity of Kylar being an assassin, I mean, wet boy, sorry. Like that's all still there, it's still good. So if you liked the previous books, you're going to enjoy this one for sure. I'll also say if you didn't read the previous books and you're contemplating starting now because maybe you liked the Lightbringer books and you want to get into the Night Angel books, you know, Brent Weeks' next books, but you've heard the previous trilogy was just kind of okay, which is really where I fell on it, then maybe you're interested in starting with Nemesis. I think you could, but you may be a little confused and you're definitely not going to fully appreciate all of the callbacks to previous things, but at the same time, the book does not really rely too much upon the events of the previous trilogy, other than some key moments which are, you know, explained pretty heavily. So you wouldn't be confused if you haven't read the previous books, but you're also going to definitely recognize the points where you know you should get something, but you don't because you haven't read it, or some side characters mentioned that you don't know who they are. It, those things don't really matter, so you could start with Nemesis, and I think Brent Weeks is kind of intending for people to be able to. I don't think I would really recommend people do that, though, because there is just enough content that's mentioned where you're going to be confused. So, I don't know, if you're kind of a completionist person like me, you're definitely going to want to read the previous trilogy. If you don't care and you're just a fan of Weeks and you want to get into his next book, then go for it, I guess. Anyway, I think that's kind of a positive that gives people that flexibility, and it really kind of hits reset on the series from where we ended off in Beyond the Shadows. That's good, and it doesn't do it in an awkward way. It kind of balances the best of both worlds here in a new trilogy, but giving people that ability to jump in if they want, so that's a positive. Other kind of general positives, it's got a big plot, lots of action, lots of twists and turns, so what you'd expect from a fan from an epic fantasy book, it has all of those elements in it. It's got some excellent character work, really great character interactions between Kylar and Vi, especially really kind of keep things going. Their dynamic is great because there's two there are two characters that have a lot of emotions kind of locked away and not too many people can understand them, if really any at all. But when they are together, they kind of unlock each other and really add an extra dynamic. They've got a great chemistry uh, to, their, to their characters. So I really enjoyed everything about their interactions. So the Kylar and Vi, I mean uh, Verdiana, 
dynamic really kind of keep things going. But it's really Viridiana that steals the show here. She is the best character uh, in the Night Angel books that Brent Weeks has produced thus far. Kylar, I have some issues with that I'll get to in just a minute. But Vi has really emerged as a standout character and one of Brent Weeks' best. And I think most people are really going to gravitate towards her anytime she's on screen. And she has a very big role in this book. Previously, you know, in the previous trilogy, she was kind of off and on, became a bigger character later on. But she is definitely established as like the second main character in this book. Another positive, I think a lot of people are going to be curious about this because the original Night Angel, Angel trilogy had a lot of kind of cringy teenage boy male gaze-ish type problems. And Nemesis has grown up quite a bit, which is which is needed, right? We, we needed to get away from that type of stuff. It was kind of acceptable, I guess, in the mid-2000s. Everyone was doing it. I, I mean, male gaze is not really an acceptable thing. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, as far as, like, appearing in literature, it was not uncommon. And nowadays, not so much, not okay. And Nemesis is, is done away with that and handles women in the story much better. So that is refreshing and needed. Um, and then finally, the book, it gets better as it goes along. It has a little bit of a slow start, which I'll cover in a minute. But by the end, the final action and like the last probably third to maybe half of the book is really just enjoyable all the way through. So if you're stuck a little bit at the beginning, I would say continue going. It definitely gets better. Okay, so on the negative side, I mean, I do have to touch on that slow start. I was struggling at the beginning of this book and thinking like, is this really what Brent Weeks has spent these years producing? Because this book is not great. The first third is is a little rough. Like, not that much of impact happens. You're following Kylar around and Kylar has no idea what's going on. And it's just a little frustrating to the reader. I, I was frustrated. I was just wishing that that Kyler would be a more competent character, I suppose. And it, it, it gets better, right? So the first third to maybe half, no, I'll just say the first third. The first third is not my favorite. I would say it's kind of below average, but from there it gets much better. So do continue through that, please. So in a change of pace from the previous trilogy, the story is told from a first person perspective mostly. It kind of has that framing narrative, third person framing narrative that you'll see, I'm not gonna do any spoilers, but um, you'll see it goes back and forth and it relies heavily on the unreliable narrator trope, which is fine. Like I like a lot of stories that, that do this type of thing. However, the narration is sometimes so unreliable and there are just so many like different breadcrumbs that you're kind of supposed to pick up on as the reader and be able to recall like, okay, this aspect was maybe a little fishy, what was actually happening here, here and here. And in an 800 page book, I, I struggled a little bit to follow everything that Weeks was trying to do. It's a very ambitious plot, we'll say. And a lot of it gets pulled off okay, but some of it I think he could have maybe simplified. Now, one of my biggest issues was Kylar as a character and as a narrator. He just takes on, so it's from his, it's from his perspective, right? First person point of view. He takes on so many different personas. He goes from kind of awkward teenage boy to dispassionate killer assassin web boy to like navel gazing philosopher back to just kind of like regular early 20s guy. And I, I really struggled to accept that this character who is in his early 20s really has like all of the requisite wisdom to be handing down some of this navel gazing philosophy that he gets into and then also be, you know, understand how to be this terrible killer. Like it's like too many things that are stuffed into one character, but it's all from his point of view. So he will quickly go from tone to tone to tone. And I, I didn't enjoy that. I, I felt like a lot of times it wasn't Kylar talking, it was Brent Weeks talking. And the writing is good, and the philosophy is good, and there are a lot of really interesting ideas covered, but I wasn't able to accept that Kylar Stern, in his current, you know, early 20s, like the life that he's lived, I was not able to accept that he would really understand all of these things, 
enough to be handing them down to me as the reader. So I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit when we got into these things because I was just thinking this is not Kylar, like why is this included in the story? And that rolls into my next main criticism. The Kylar tone thing is big number one. And number two, as far as big issues, is the thing is just too long. Nemesis is too long of a book. It really could be shorter if Weeks had cut out a lot of the navel gazing that I didn't really get attached to and a lot of the fight scenes. There are just so many. It's like every time Kyler goes from objective to objective, he's got to have an extended fight scene. There's one scene where he's literally just crossing a room to get to another room and it goes like ad nauseum through him climbing over people and making his way through this like dining area and by the end of the day there's just it doesn't add anything to the plot there's a chapter where he's stuck under a pier trying to just like make his way to safety and hold on while some other plot things are happening and it just sticks there for for a long time and these are just pages and pages that are really not adding anything that i think should have been cut out the book is very long and the story is not like massively big on an epic scale it's kind of a small contained story a a plot that has big ramifications but a contained incident we'll say that really could have been in a 500 to 600 page book not an 800 page book that's it's too long some big fans of the first trilogy may be a little disappointed that some pretty well established side characters don't show up at all or are just on the screen briefly. I was fine with it because I think it's good that we're recontextualizing the story and making it focus on Kylar and Vi as the two big main characters. The story that the book tells is, like I said, a pretty contained story, so it doesn't make sense to bring in everyone, and there's definitely room in future um, Kylar Stern books where we could bring in these characters. So I think some may be a little disappointed, but you know, I, th I thought it was a good decision, actually. So final criticism is the ending was maybe a little too convoluted. After a reread through and some discussion with Josh on Phantology, I got what was happening, but it was maybe a little more complex than I was used to and could have used a little more explanation or foreshadowing. I think it was a little more complex than the usual, uh, what Brandon Sanderson tries to do where he does like a 10-80-10 split of 10% of the people totally call the ending and climax before it happens. 80% are figuring it out as it happens and it's really satisfying for those people. And 10% are like, what the heck just happened? And even after rereads just don't get it. I don't know what the ratio is in Nemesis, but it was more complex than I'm used to. Okay, I talked a lot through some of those things. So I'm gonna go through quickly some different um, elements of the story and give some ratings. So plot, I'm gonna give seven out of 10. I thought the story that it was weaving was very ambitious and it didn't quite pull it off in the way that Weeks wanted to. The beginning especially is weak and then it it gets very fast paced through the latter half and there are so many things that are trying to weave together and so many little breadcrumbs that are being left with the unreliable narration issue that uh, it, it doesn't quite come together maybe as well as, you know, not as tightly as, um, as some masterclass stories do. Setting, I'm going to give nine out of 10. I thought this was excellent. This is a big improvement over Midcryu and the previous Night Angel stories. It really solidifies what this world is going to be. Previously, uh, the Night Angel universe and world was really kind of nebulous as far as like who all these different factions are and, and what rules there are to the magic and everything. This does a, a very good job of setting up for future books. Pacing, I'm going to drop down again to 7 out of 10. Like I said, the beginning is poor. The ending goes very, very quickly. Uh, the whole latter half goes very quickly. And I think that's fine. Like a, a Night Angel book, you'd expect a very fast pace. That's absolutely appropriate. But at the same time, uh, th there does need to be a little bit of you know, fast and slow so we can catch our breath. And the slow parts became the navel gazing stuff that, like I said earlier, I, sh I struggled with. So overall pacing was not my favorite. Characters, again, seven out of 10. Kylar is a total enigma to me. I do not understand how one character can have so many different sides to him at this stage in his life. Viridiana is excellent and gets a 10 out of 10 for her character alone. Um, she's very capable, but at the same time has all of these 
hidden emotional issues that she doesn't really show to anyone except to Kylar. And so their dynamic is fantastic, but she's also grown so much as a character over the years, which is why I think if you don't read the original Night Angel trilogy, you, you're going to be just not appreciating everything that the characters have done over this time. So uh, definitely read that trilogy, if only to fully appreciate Vi, I mean, Viridiana, who is excellent. And then there are a bunch of side characters that are very solid, uh, especially the Chandri sisters and the new villain is uh, is very solid. These are all very kind of gray characters that have a lot of different hidden motives that we're trying to unravel the whole time. And I think this is done very well. And then finally, pros, 9 out of 10. I thought this was excellent. The only thing that I would take off is it's sometimes it's a little too goofy and the tone, I think tone kind of fits into pros. I don't know. I don't separate these categories super well, but there were times where I struggled a little bit with just the the tone, but the writing itself, like the execution of the pros was very solid. So nine out of 10. So overall, this is an eight out of 10 book. If you like Brent Weeks, if you like the Night Angel books, if you like Lightbringer, if you like epic fantasy in general, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy Night Angel Nemesis quite a bit, but I do think there was a lot of potential to make this book better, make it a little tighter narrative, take out some of the unnecessary action, and maybe solidify who Kyler is as a character rather than having so much Brent Weeks talking to us in the first person narrative. I think there are definitely some improvements that can be made. Weeks is planning on writing more Kyler Stern books. And interestingly, Brent Weeks actually said that he wanted to write this book years sooner, but felt like he didn't have the necessary tools at the time, so he went back and wrote Lightbringer and then came back to the series as a much better author. That is very apparent. This book is much better than the previous Night Angel books, and I really wish I could rate it higher because there are a lot of things that I really enjoyed, but when you compare it to another first-person narrative like The Will of the Many by James Eilington that I just read, it is not quite the same level of tight narrative throughout, and so I've got to knock it down a little bit. However, I did enjoy Night Angel Nemesis quite a bit and will recommend it without much hesitation. I think there are certainly some quibbles that I had, but honestly, a lot of the negatives that I had, I really just had to mention because I thought this book could be so much more if a few of these things were cleaned up. Overall, the pros, the execution was very solid. This is a top tier fantasy book. So thank you, Brent Winks, for writing and thank you for the advanced copy. See you later.